Question, my friend and sister Sharon, and today I'm excited to bring this exhortation on how to build self-love, how to become your own best friend. First of all, beloved, we must know and understand that Jesus, he was very clear to his disciples who asked Jesus, what was the greatest commandment out of all the 600 something laws that was given to, to Moses and to the Levites, they wanted to know what's the greatest. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22, verse 40, he said, it is to love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. What is happening is many of us that follow Christ, we have we have asked Jesus to forgive us of our sins. We are striving daily to put down that flesh. You must hate sin. You must hate it because what you hate cannot dominate. And when we really love God, and, and, and that word love, friends, means simply that you are seeking after knowing this person, doing what pleases that person. You think about them all the time. You're on a discovery mission to know how to please this person that you love. So when we are after God like this, friends, you can't help but to become in tune with you. Because without loving you, there are many things you will tolerate. There are many people who you will allow to abuse you, take advantage of you, manipulate you. Why? Because there is no love for self. And some of us, beloved, we don't realize that uh, some of our ways that we're feeling and some of the things we're doing, it is a result of self-hatred. So let's take a look at a portrait of how to develop good self-worth, self-esteem. And the word esteem simply means estimation. How I esteem myself. How, what is my estimation of myself? Because friends, there are some things that we that desire to, to work the fields for God to help harvest lost souls. It takes confidence. It takes boldness and tenacity in Christ Jesus to move out in the things of God. It's not possible to, to be a disciple of Jesus without good self-worth, self-esteem, self-love. And, and it is commanded that we love ourselves, our neighbor as ourselves. I can't love you if I don't love me. So we need to really um, take a look at this thing because guess what? When you really love yourself, you understand that you have value and all of the gifts that, that the Holy Spirit now imparts to you and I, out of love, we seek to give them away because one of the greatest expressions of love is giving. So a person who is stingy and they're just, you know, that, you know, everything is a dollar, you know, you got to pay for everything. <laughs> that person doesn't have love. You can't meet God and not become a giver. So one of the greatest expressions of, of loving God and, you, and your neighbor is yourself. You will become a giver. You look for every opportunity to give. Why? Because it is one of the greatest expressions of love. So let's take a look, beloved, at 10 things that we will be able to discern that we are not our best friend. How can I become my best friend if I don't know or love myself if I don't know what it looks like? Number one is confidence. When you lack self-confidence, and this is manifest, when you find someone that's always seeking someone's opinion, you know, you, you, you done bought the shoes, you love the shoes. Now, you done walked up on your um, auntie and she like, ugh, girl, where you get them shoes? This is ugly. And you're like whatever. Why? Because I got confidence. This is what I like. This is what I brought. So, so when you don't really love yourself, you lack confidence. You are easily persuaded. 
you can make a decision and someone can come and just wreck havoc on your decision. And then you right back to the store trying to get your money back, knowing you don't wore the shoes. Number two, self-respect. When, when there is no respect for self, it will be manifested in how you allow people to keep walking over you. And some of us think that that's love to just keep letting people, you know, walk over you. No, beloved, you must have boundaries and respect for yourself. And here's a great example of, of lack of uh, self-respect is the way we adorn our bodies. Women think that because they are clad and they're sexy, that they're actually you know, promoting self-confidence. No, it shows the entire world. You don't have respect for your only body. You only get one body and it shows that not only do you not have respect for you, but you don't have respect for other people's sons and husbands and grandfathers and uncles because you are trying to seduce everybody and do what? Get attention to your own self. So, so you will manifest this lack of self-respect, lack of, lack of confidence, and, you know, selfishness. You're selfish. It's all about me, which is, beloved, uh, it is perverted, but it's the truth. People who are like that really is self-hatred. Because see, what you love, you protect it. And so when a woman is clad half naked, you put yourself at risk for violence and many other things that stir up lustful spirits, violent spirits. It stir them up. So how, how can we ever say we respect ourselves and we play with this only body that we have been given stewardship? Number four, excuse me, number three, when you are, when you really love yourself, you understand assertiveness, a person who has confidence and they have self-respect, they can come across to people who don't love themselves and they don't have self-respect that you could come off as arrogant to a person that really doesn't have good self-worth and self, uh, uh, love for themselves. Themselves because you will assert yourself. You, you, you know, sometimes they'll say, you, you taking over. We're not taking over. That person will assert themselves because they have confidence in their gift and they want to help you by extending their gift. So they will step up and step into a situation because they have confidence and in, in their gift. Number four is motivation. When you lack love for yourself, you don't have self-motivation. It you you just sit and wallow in every situation because you don't have that 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 motor, you know, m motivation is about motor. It's about movement, it's about power. That's what motivation is. It moves you. So you 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 lack self-love when you don't have motivation for for you to get yourself up and keep moving through every trial, every situation, leaning on Jesus, leaning on God the Father, and, and through prayer, casting all your cares upon him and keeping it moving, motivate, keeping your motivation, keeping that motor running. So self-love self -love is, is manifest through self-motivation. Number five, when you are always asking what other people think, this is a sign, beloved, that you lack confidence. And because, see, look, when you really love yourself, you you are the final authority. And you should not give any other person the final say over a situation because you, beloved, have to live with it. Number six, so when you're always asking opinions, you're, you know, even people who have dreams, this is a good example. When you have a dream, beloved, and you believe God is dealing with you and speaking to you through visions and dreams, you don't have to email and text everybody. You, you, you build your confidence in God by keeping everything pointed upward. God, what are you speaking to me? Because someone could take your dream, they can interpret it and harm you. See, see, you open yourself up to being attacked by by people who may not even have good love and they'll turn that thing that you told them and next you know you all messed up because you you're you're seeking the arm of men flesh so no beloved when you are always asking you can put yourself in a vulnerable situation you got to build that self esteem that self estimation and worth in Christ in your own relationship journal put it to the side and have confidence that if God has spoken to me he will make it plain amen number 6 you need approval this we find with a lot of preachers who are sitting up under false preachers wolves uh 
almost cultic uh, leadership. They're, they're in cults, really, seeking approval, running to colleges to, to get degrees in theology, running here, running there, trying to get this recognition, that recognition. Beloved, that is a manifestation of lack of self-worth. It is actually self-hatred. See, when you, when you hate yourself, you despise your own opinion of self. That's why you need somebody else to give it to you. And this is why many of us are being destroyed because we keep seeking after somebody else to tell us instead of going to God and developing a close relationship with our shepherd, with Jesus, who says we will know his voice as he leads us. Amen. So you need approval. Number seven is forgiveness. People who do not extend forgiveness to others is because they don't forgive themselves. They hate themselves. Beloved, when you refuse to forgive, not only is it a manifestation of pride, it is a manifestation of, of, of really, it's, it's self-hatred. You have to learn to forgive yourself and others. We all make mistakes. You have to learn to laugh at yourself. See, when you learn to love yourself, you, you, you learn to not take yourself so serious because we have propensities, and I'm not talking sin necessarily. I'm talking about sometimes we just goofy, and sometimes, you know, <laughs> we say stuff. It'd be like, Sharon, shut up. Yeah, sometimes I tell myself, Sharon, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> and then I forgive myself for being so, you know, you got to learn to do this, friends. You got to learn to laugh at yourself. And, and, and when you uh, make a mistake, you got to use that to do better the next time. You don't kill yourself over it, beloved. We all got stuff where we like, man, I could have did that better. Number, number eight, you invest in yourself when you love yourself. People who do not invest in themselves sit around watching TV, playing video games all day. No investment because what you value, you you put time in, you put money into it, you you invest in it to make it beautiful, to make it better. So when we love ourselves, we invest good time. We're, we're always trying to get knowledge. You know, when some people are playing video games, so Sharon is studying. You know, I'm researching. I'm I'm you know I'm in the word. I'm 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 trying to sharpen my weapon. So, so because why I love, I love me and I love Jesus. I love everything he's given me to do because, because this is who I am. So I invest in that. I, I invest my time in worship and prayer. This is what I love because I love him. And remember, we got to love God first and then our neighbor is ourselves. And because I love you all, I put myself out here on YouTube with the things that I believe Jesus has inspired me to say to you. So it is love that brings me to the channel. And oftentimes, you know, I could get a little bang, bang, bang. You know, it's love because I don't want you to perish. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you not to have peace and joy in your life. I want you to feel what I feel. I want you to 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 have that 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 place of 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 you know where you can empty out to Jesus because this is what I know. He's a good shepherd. He's alive. Peace and joy is is what he's given me and I want you to have it. So, I'm willing to risk uh being uh, attacked. I'm I'm willing to risk it all by being on the channel and bringing these things to you. Amen. So, what brings that about is my investment in my private time. Amen. So so people who are usually dealing with loneliness, it's a lack of love because when you love somebody, you want to be with them. You want to spend time. You don't despise them at all. So, friends, if you're dealing with deep loneliness and just everything is drabby, it's, it's a lack of love. It's a lack of love for him because, see, the more we love God, he deposits our divine purpose. We take on his heart and we begin to move towards where? The mission field. The harvest, oh beloved, you run into that mission field because you are in love with him and God is in love with souls. He wants to redeem us. And so you become all about redemption when you really love God because he so loved the world he gave. So so this is why you, you, you're you on a search mission. What's, what's my gifts? What's in me, God? What did you put in me? What do you want me to do to build my fellow man? Amen. And, and in that, you spend time investing to become your best. 
and everything that he's giving you to steward. Amen. Number nine is, is addiction. When, when there is not love for yourself, this is where you find people who keep putting uh, drugs. They keep having illicit sex. They keep bringing poison into the body, overeating. You refuse to eat healthy foods. You make all types of excuses and, and you will sleep with a stranger. You, you open your body literally to anybody. That is a manifestation of self hatred because what you value, you will protect it. If I value my lungs, because this is the only temple that I have, I'm not going to, I'm not putting nothing in it that can harm it because I love my body because I know that God loves it because this is his temple. And this is where he has decided with Jesus to make an abode, a casa, a house. This is his abode. This is his temple. So I cannot risk or turn it up because it can harm me. So beloved, if you are smoking and drinking and doing all these things, it's because you really hate yourself. Oh yes, you you hate you because what you love, remember, you protect it. Last but not least is abuse. People who do not love themselves tolerate abuse. You tolerate it. No, when you love yourself and you understand that you have to take care of yourself so that you can be an expression, a conduit for the glory of Jesus and the glory of God, you will not tolerate abuse. You will cut it off. When you see someone that, that is abusing themselves, you're going to tell them, stop it. Oh, yes, you will scold them and rebuke them, but you will with yourself. You have boundaries and you will not let just anybody step into your space, beloved, because you will not uh, be able to to reconcile. Listen, when when they abusing you, you can't reconcile that because that's your life and you're not going to live inside of my heart rent free, tearing up my house, tearing up my temple. You know, you you we got to learn how to give them the the boot. Get out of here. Get. You got to be able to give them the boot because we only get one life. We are not like cats. We don't get nine lives to live. So, beloved, there are 10 things for us to look at that we must make declaration. I am valuable and I and I got to love myself. I will not spend another day self-loathing. I will not spend another day tolerating abuse. I will not spend another day putting poison in my temple. It is over. I will not dare bring any more poison into my body. It is over because God wants to use my life. Glory to God. Come on. Glory to God. Glory. Come on. You got to make some declarations that it is over. I'm taking care of myself. I'm becoming my best friend because it is not sin, beloved, to love yourself, to have good self-estimation. Self-esteem is necessary to carry the torch and the flame of Jesus Christ. If you don't love you, because guess what? When they slander you, attack you, and persecute you, it's all good. I mean, I'm not living for your opinion anyway. I got one. I love me. <laughs> Come on, friend. So, so you don't fall to pieces when they attack you. You don't fall to pieces when your spouse ain't treating you like you think that he or she should, because I, I'm not pulling my self-worth from you. I'm pulling it from God who I love with my whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. If you don't want to speak to me for a week, I ain't passing out. I'm getting ready to go to work. <laughs> when you come out of your little, you know, witchcraft bag, because people who do the silent tra treatment, that's witchcraft. When you finish playing those psychological games, I'll be over here. <laughs> Until then, bye-bye. <laughs> come on, friend. We only get one life to live, and we're not going to keep wasting it, beloved. Come on, soldiers. It's time to strap up. Strap up, beloved. It's time to do the work and help our beloved Savior to snatch souls from hellfire, because that's where the masses are going, unless you, beloved, take advantage of the circle of influence around you. Amen? Get those boundaries set. Amen? All right, I love you, beloved. Till next time. Ponder and think on these things. God bless.